Welcome to chapter two into parameter context. So in our previous chapter, we went over what parameter context are, how we can use them, and why are they very useful. And we saw a few examples of how we can create. In this tutorial, we're gonna dive deep into all the options on creating parameter context, how we can associate them to a process group, and how we can leverage them across our NiFi environment. Using the create parameter context previously, uh, we created one parameter context. Now let's go and explore this particular parameter context. Going into the, your burger menu here, to edit the parameter context, click on the edit button. And here, first, let's go over the settings. The settings are pretty simple. It has the name and a description. In this case, the description is not populated. Then we have parameters. Parameters are key value pairs parameters. And here, if you see in this example, we have a parameter called input directory with a value of opt data demos pg read. And output directory is going to be my pg1 put. So if we were to edit one parameter, again, click the edit button. In here, uh, we have the name, the value, and the description. And also if it's a sensitive or not sensitive value. Like we mentioned previously, a sensitive property can only reference a sensitive parameter. And a non-sensitive property can only reference a non-sensitive parameter. Or we can set it as empty in this case, but we're not gonna do that. Now let's go ahead and add a new parameter to our context. Let's just say this is my string parameter and then give it a value. Let's say inside byte. We, this is not gonna be a sensitive and we're not gonna give it a description. Now let's apply this. Let's close and exit the parameter. How can we make use of these parameters? Before we get into the parameter context processing group, what I'll do here, I'll drag on a canvas, uh, a generate flow file. And let's see how we can make use of that parameter context. Before we use a parameter context, we have to create it. Now, to be able to use a parameter context, we have to assign it to a processing group. In this case right now, you see we are on the main canvas. So to do so, what you want to do, you want to go into your configuration here. All right. Now, don't select the processor. Click on the canvas so you won't have nothing. So you have nothing selected. And once you're here, you want to from the drop down, you want to select parameter context that you want to use. Click select and then apply. Then in this situation, the parameter context will be will be assigned to this uh, processing group, which is the main one. We will be able to use the parameter context into our processors. So let's go ahead and create a new attribute using a parameter context. So I'll say my name is going to be my attribute and we're going to reference a parameter. So you can see here this particular processor accept expression language and parameter context. And the way you use it is type hash, open curly brace, control space. And this will give us a list of available parameter context that we have in to our parameter context that we just created. So in my case, I'm just gonna say string parameter. Press and press OK, apply. Now let's forward this to a particular a log attribute processor. We can observe what comes out of it. Let's run it only once and evaluate the attribute that that flow file had created. And we can see that my attribute that received that parameter context has been evaluated with inside byte, which is the correct value. Can we use anything else but string and non and sensitive properties? Yes. Um, we can actually make reference for expression language elements in this case. So let's say this is going to be my expression language context. And here, what I'll do, I'll put an expression language definition. We're going to get the current time and apply. 
Now you remember our parameter name, it's EL context. So let's go ahead and reference it here. So what I want to do now, I want to display the EL context content. Keep in mind that this was an expression language that we've embedded inside. Uh, let's remove the, that we've embedded inside the parameter context. Let's run it once and look at the attribute. So if you see right now, this returned me a timestamp value. Uh, this is very important to notice that the return will be evaluated at runtime. So what that tells us is that the expression language uh, return value, it's evaluated when you use that parameter context uh, attribute. We saw how we can add uh, a new parameter context to our existing parameter context, how we can associate that parameter context to our uh, processing group, and how we can actually add expression language definitions inside a parameter context. Thank you for watching. If you found this uh, content useful, please consider subscribing and drop a comment or even um, liking the video. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where we're going to dive into a real life example of how we can use parameter context to elevate our NiFi flows.